before we go any further with this tutorial, I want to mention Git and GitHub. The reason being, if we're working on our project and our tutorial, we want to make sure we don't lose our changes. We also want to make sure that if we make a mistake, we can roll back. And so at this point, it will be good to look at Git and GitHub and how we can use that within Visual Studio. If you don't already have a GitHub account, uh, then please uh, set one up. Uh, you can go to github.com. And Visual Studio has Git and GitHub capabilities uh, built in. So we don't need to install any new extensions, uh, but we can actually use Git within Visual Studio. If you Google Visual Studio GitHub, you will find this page, which gives you kind of an overview of how you can use Git uh, within Visual Studio. If you're not familiar with Git basics, then that again is not the focus of this tutorial, uh, but I encourage you to familiarize yourself with the uh, core concepts, but we will be using uh, Git uh, now just to, to set it up and make sure our code is essentially versioned and backed up to the cloud. And I would encourage that that's the standard practice uh, for any code coding project that you're working on to make sure you version your code and have it backed up. And uh, little and often is the key advice. You would make snapshot changes at regular intervals to capture your progress as you go. The terminology uh, for capturing snapshots is essentially to make commits and then to push those commits up to a remote repository, which is essentially the repository hosted in this case on github.com. Let's start with the basics and going back into Visual Studio, let's set up Git to run on or run within the project that we've already created. So you may have noticed already that there's a there will likely be a git changes tab um, in in your user interface for Visual Studio. If it doesn't appear, you can click on the view menu and click on git changes. When we haven't initialized any version control or, or git, we have the option here to create a git repository, which is what we need to do the first time we're, when we're setting this up. So we've already created some code and what we want to do is set up the necessary settings so that we can uh, record all our changes into a Git repository and then push those changes to github.com. So if we click on create Git repository, this will open up another window and we have a few options here to set up. We can leave most of these default so the local path is just confirming where we're working on your local machine. A git ignore template, we're going to leave that as default. Um, a git ignore essentially specifies intentionally untracked files, as the information shows here, that git should, should ignore. So not every file in our solution explorer or our project do we want to version. Some are temporary files, some are local configuration files with password and credentials in, for example. So we don't want everything going up to GitHub and that's what a .git ignore file controls. We can leave these options default. You can see I've already authenticated with my GitHub account and the owner has been specified as myself. The repository name, uh, it defaults to the project name. I will change this to be a bit more uh, explanatory and make it John's ASP net test project. I'll leave the description blank and I'll keep it as a private repository for now. And then once we're done, uh, we can go create and push. What this will do, it will then, as we can see down the bottom here, it says uh, your task will continue running in the background. It's, it's kind of setting up the local configuration and then it will try to push my code up to github.com. While we're waiting, let's go on to github.com and go to my profile. There we go, you can see my GitHub profile. 
uh, I am logged in and as you can see I've got quite a few repositories or projects some of these are my my work projects now let's have a look at some point we should see the new project having been created okay so back in Visual Studio we can see on git changes uh, it automatically committed the changes and started pushing them we can see there's now two outgoing changes to be made you can also see this status down the bottom and what we can actually do let's push this up so actually force it to go up we'll hit push and we can see the confirmation there pushing branch which is in this case the master branch let's just go back to github and we'll refresh oh, fantastic so we can now see it's created the repository for us on uh, github.com that's one way of doing it you can of course create a new repo on github.com and then clone it down into visual studio there are different ways of doing that but if you wanted to follow this uh, kind of workflow for your first project that's totally fine so what we've got here we've got what looks like an empty project at the moment um, so if we refresh again visual studio is telling us that there's nothing pending to go outgoing or incoming so if we refresh again we may have just loaded it before the files got pushed up and there we go we refresh again and we can see actually the whole project is now essentially online it's protected because it's a private repo but now my code is safe um, i can click into it and i can see all the code is there so that's good news uh, we can see that also there was a git ignore file that's been created now we can't actually see our git ignore file in our solution explorer in visual studio but we can verify that it is actually there by right clicking on the solution and using the open folder in file explorer option which will open our project in our native file explorer within windows and here we can see where all the files actually live there is a git ignore uh, file now we don't need to worry about that going forward or we know that that's a good thing to have it will make sure that files that temporary files and the the kind of files that we don't want into going into git being versioned uh, that they they won't be monitored by git uh, so that's the important point uh, for now what i want to do next is just make sure that we're comfortable making a change to some of our code and then committing and pushing that change so what we'll do, we'll open up our pages and let's go to the index page and let's make a simple text change. So let's just replace the project name uh, with this and we can see that this is then a, a change, it's not saved. If we hit Control S, it's then marked up as green over here, which is a visual indicator that there's been a change made. We can also see the in our solution explorer the icon next to it um, has been changed to pending edit so that means git is aware of the change but we haven't we haven't committed or pushed it yet so if we go to git changes it's on, it's reliant on us to actually commit this change and essentially stamp it in the history of the project so what what we need to do when we have this change that's been picked up on automatically by Git, we need to give it a message, a commit message. Um, we would normally want to make this a sensible and understandable message that would make sense to other developers on the project so that they know what it was the change that we made. In this case, I'm just going to say that I updated text on homepage. That will do for now. If I go commit all, that will commit the change locally, but it won't push it to the remote GitHub repo. If you click on the little drop down, you'll see there are different options. And it's an important point to note that using Git is a two step process. You need to commit and push. The benefit of that is, is that you can make lots of commits locally. And if you're offline, if you don't have internet connectivity, you can still make those commits. And then when you get back online, you can push them all up to the server and all those commits have the timestamps and the the messages and the changes that you wanted to log so that's one benefit if we're working normally and we're connected online we may wish to 
for ease, commit all and push in one go. So we can change that as the default option. We click on that, it then kicks in. And as we can see here, it's kind of committed, it's pushing, we get a notification that it's, that it's doing that. Shortly that'll be done. You can see it's initiating the push. And once it's finished, we can verify that that change has gone up to github.com just to make sure that we're happy that it's working by going on to github.com and checking that it's there. Uh, so here we've now got a success message that it's successfully pushed to the master branch on, on the origin. So let's just close that. Let's go into GitHub. And if we refresh, we should see this number of commits uh, having increased by one. So if we refresh, we can then now see three commits. And if we click on the commit history, we can see here is my latest commit. So updated text on homepage. This is its unique uh, commit ID. If we click on it, we can actually preview the changes that were made. So red is for the, the text that has been essentially deleted. Green is for the text that's that's been added. So we've got a simple one line change. And this is the, the beauty of Git. We can version all our changes. It means that everything is backed up. Other developers can work on the same project as us and you can merge changes into the same project and not worry about losing changes.